see a couple of names out there on the attendee list that I'm very familiar with, and I've spoken to several of you uh, over the past year or two or three. Uh, my name is Jeff Pache, and I've done several of these webinars before on different topics, and this one is the science of Cambostat. Uh, Cambostat is a great product. Uh, growth regulators have been around for many, many years, and so we're going to talk a little bit about Cambostat and what it can do for you, how it can help trees, and, and some of the side benefits and some of the anecdotal benefits as well. Uh, just a little bit of information about me. I am actually a part-time bass fisherman, and I did go to a, a little place which we call the Big Farm in Columbus, Ohio, where I studied ornamental horticulture. And this is my contact information. Basically what I do is I work as a technical rep, and I'm very for fortunate to have a technical support team that I work with. And so what we do is we support the arborists out there in the country. We also support our own territory managers as well. And those are the local representatives for Rainbow. And there's my contact information. And one thing that we do at Rainbow is that we, um, we take a scientific approach. We don't guess. We don't roll the dice and just come up with you know just some crazy uh, solution. We put our heads together. We follow certain protocols that we've uh, that we've uh, basically built and designed, and we've collaborated with many of the other institutions that are you're seeing out there. We collaborate with Ohio State, Purdue, uh, a lot of the institutions. We partner with uh, some of the large tree care companies as, as well. And uh, so we put our minds together, and what our purpose is out there to give support to the arborists and, and to share the experiences that we had gained over the many years because we also have a service side uh, part of our business. Uh, we are really the largest tree care company in Minnesota, and we, uh, we delivered uh, plant health care services, general tree work services uh, to the public. So we're going to have a little bit of a, uh, a talk, a little bit about Cambostat. Uh, this is pretty much the overview, what we're going to be covering, uh, how it works and what it does, how do you apply it. And we're also going to talk a little bit, of, a little bit about the precautions. And so Cambostat is a great product. I've been using it for years. However, you must take care and, uh, and, and use it with, with some discretion on certain species. Uh, that are extremely sensitive to it. So uh, don't get nervous. It's, um, it's a great product. It works well. Uh, it's very popular. And, uh, and we are here to support you with technical questions. Just so you know, we, um, we have several uh, uh, bulletins and fact sheets and cell sheets, application guides, uh, opportunity guides. They're all available free of charge. If you have a question, go into the dialog box at the bottom right hand corner of the screen and type in your information, type in your questions. Uh, they will all be addressed, uh, not during the presentation, but after. If you're looking for any guidance in terms of selling cell sheets or guides, please indicate that as well. Uh, very briefly, for those who uh, you out there don't know who Rainbow Tree Care Scientific Advancements is, uh, we are division of the Rainbow Tree Care Company. And Rainbow, as you know, we got started back in the 70s. The only service that Rainbow provided at that point in time was treating elm trees for Dutch elm disease. And eventually we became a large tree company offering the plant health care services. And now we've expanded our line. We do home pest control. Uh, we do lawn care. We also uh, do uh, Christmas lighting service as well. So, but I'm more, um, I work basically with the science uh, team, and so what I do is I help, uh, like I mentioned, arborists, landscape clients uh, on how to use these products that, and the key word is predict, that bring predictable results, uh, so you're, you become successful and your client is happy. Uh, one thing that we do is we do a lot of training at Rainbow. Uh, we also do uh, custom marketing, which we'll talk a little bit about later. We'll talk about taking your company logo, your company contact information, putting it on a sell sheet so you can distribute to your clients, 
and it's a very professionally done sell sheet on good quality stock paper uh, that um, will make an impression. One thing that we do is we also offer some guidance and sales training. We talk about uh, the product costs in terms of the diameter and many of the product costs today uh, that are applied either to the soil, to the trunk, or to the bark are in terms of the diameter of the tree or in some cases the height as well. Uh, we'll also talk about some of our packaging and how we can uh, how creative we are about you know some of our programs, our shipping programs. So we've got a lot of interesting, um, uh, a lot of interesting ideas out there. Uh, we do specialize in research, and we do focus on the problems that you're experiencing out there. And if you're having a problem, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's an insect or a disease problem, or a non-pest related problem. Please feel free to contact me or to contact Rainbow, uh, we're more than happy to help to get out there. And oftentimes in our travels, when we're in your area, if it works into our schedule, uh, we, we also enjoy getting out there, meeting you, doing a face-to-face, -face, and meeting uh, your clients, discussing some of the issues and some of the different treatment options. So here's basically the, uh, the Cambostat Basics. Uh, Pack all. Actually, years ago, it was introduced to the industry as a fungicide uh, to reduce uh, foliar diseases. Uh, during the uh, the evaluation process, it was found out where the the product was not a very good fungicide. But what it did, it actually caused the stunting of some of the test plants. So immediately, they said, "Well, this is not going to work. These plants are short, compact. They're stunted." And oddly enough, their foliage is very dark and green in color. And so we, they decided to shelve it. But so now it's been brought back. And Paclobutrazole has been used um, in the horticultural industry. It's used in the golf course industry as well. And if you think about uh, mums or any sort of greenhouse crop that you would purchase at a garden center, a poinsettia, a mum, uh, Easter lilies, these plants have all been treated with growth regulators, and they have for many years. And what, what the public wants when it comes to house plants or, let's say, poinsettias, uh, they will like short, bushy, compact plants, nice foliage with flowers laying on top of them. And that's one of the benefits that growth regulators provide. They give you that really perfect look. If you've gone to a garden center, you've looked at the hardy mums, they look so consistent, it looks so even, it looks like they came out of some sort of machine. Many years ago, mums were produced and they were, um, they were pruned and pinched, so to speak, by hand. Each individual apical meristem was tipped and pruned out, and that was uh, done to induce lateral branching because the mums uh, that are produced that way had many, many more flower buds and they just look more appealing. There were so many flowers on the mums, you couldn't even see the green foliage. So now growth regulators are used to do that, and pinching is a thing of the past. But how does this product, pack the beaches, well, how does it affect the growth rate? Well, what it does, it inhibits the biosynthesis of gibberellic, of gibberellic acid. It's kind of hard to say sometimes. But and gibberellic acid is responsible for the terminal growth of the plants. Uh, this is not a type 1, which is more of a herbicide type uh, growth regulator. Uh, there's, there are products out there where actually will burn out the apical meristem and induce lateral branching that way. There are some drawbacks to them. Uh, some of those um, foliar applied ones that they will give you a temporary chlorosis. But Canvastat is applied to the soil. It's a type 2. So what you're getting is the same number of cells, but they're just much, much smaller. And one thing that you can pretty much rely on, this product, if a properly applied, uh, will give you, depending on the species, of course, anywhere from 40 to 60% growth rate reduction over three years. So it, it lasts quite a long time. And it's very, very simple uh, to apply, as we'll talk about. So growth control. Here's some examples of a canvas stated treated oak. You can see in the photo, this is the typical annual growth for this tree. And so let's say this is six, seven inches in length. And then one year after, 
you can see how that growth rate has been reduced dramatically. And you notice the inner nodes are much smaller and much shorter. Uh, oftentimes, the foliage is slightly smaller than normal. And, and I'll have some photos that will illustrate that difference. Uh, some people um, may not like a smaller foliage, but I think it gives that tree, or if you're using it on shrubs, a much finer looking uh, plant. And also, the leaves are much, much darker green from the use of it. And here's some examples of some of the reduced growth. It keeps them nice and bushy and compact, and just gives that overall healthier look to it. Here's an example of silver maple. One thing that you, that's very important I want to mention about maples, the genus Acer, um, they have plants in that genus that are extremely sensitive to canvastat, and they also have uh, species that are very, very resistant. Silver maples, we all know what a silver maple does. It grows very rapidly, and that is somewhat very resistant, so you have to use your higher rate, probably your D or E rate. It's almost to the F rate. And you can see here's the difference of the treated on the right and the untreated on, on the left. Leaf size, you notice, are smaller to the untreated control. But I think the, has, the plant has a nicer look to it. The leaf is a little bit more uh, more attractive to me. And you will reduce your growth rate, depending on the species now, anywhere from 40 to 60%. Here's an example of black walnut. You can see the treated versus the untreated. You notice right away, you can see the darker colored foliage. And the internode, internodal growth has much been greatly more reduced. Uh, red oaks, if you ever want to try it, the ideal tree to use canvas out on, in my opinion, is a red oak. They respond extremely well. And as you can see in the photograph, the difference in the chlorophyll content, uh, this is um, uh, just one of those plants that really looks good uh, with, um, with canvas that applied. Um, this is taxis. These are U's. Uh, this will uh, also respond, but in my expert, in my my um, experience, uh, evergreens in general, and conifers, for example, you're talking about pines and spruces and firs, they are generally very resistant, and it's optimistic to say that you're going to get 40 to 60 percent growth reduction on a lot of these species, and it's not that they're just re uh, resistant to canvas; that they're resistant to growth regulators in general, whether it be soil applied or um, foliar applied as well. They are just generally resistant. Uh, this is a, an Osage orange hedge that I've been working on in Wilmington, Delaware for a couple of years. And a little bit of a history behind this. Uh, this hedge is actually one mile in length. And it's been pruned to a height of about six feet. And it's about equally as wide. And you can see in this photograph, there's two sections. I'm going to use my cursor, my mouse, to illustrate this. Here's one section right in here. It looks like it was just trimmed, and the other sections were avoided. And here's another section right here. Uh, two years ago, these two sections were treated with canvastat. They were the, the canvastat was injected into the root zone of these plants. And interesting enough, there's there's um, 5,000 of these plants planted over one mile. So they're basically on a, on a one foot center. And the purpose of them is to, to give you some privacy. If you know anything about Osage orange, you're never going to run through that hedge because that's, those thorns will rip you up. But my point is, is that this particular property owner has these uh, Osage orange hedges sheared two, sometimes three times a year at a considerable cost. But you can see what the canvas set has done. It's basically froze the growth on these plants. You can see the difference. It's it's difference between night and day. This is me with the treated uh, on the on my on your left as you're looking at the screen, and the untreated control on the right. So you've got 18 to 24 inches of untreated control versus maybe three, four, five inches of the treated. Also take note. You can see just behind me is the is the treated section. Look how dark green that foliage is. And this was done at the middle rate, at the C rate. Uh, the client really likes this. 
if he can reduce his pruning frequency from three down to one, he would be thrilled because it, it costs, I think he mentioned anywhere from seven to $10,000 each time this, this hedge was pruned. There's another use for chemistat. Uh, if you're in the utility business, you can apply it to trees to reduce the pruning cycle. Oftentimes when you get a vigorous growing tree, now the, the pruning cycle for utility lines, it depends on a couple of factors. The location near the lines and also the species of the tree. The species of the tree is going to let you know the growth rate. So if this, let's say we're a silver maple, uh, the utility companies might be in there every two, three, maybe four years with a vigorous growing uh, tree like that. But this is where it's used primarily. Um, Rainbow has a division where we will go out, out into the country with technicians, and we will do these canvas that treatments to the urban environment. So um, and if you're any city or municipal people out there, canvas has a, has a really great benefit where you'll slow down the growth rate of the trees, let's say that are along the street, along the curb, that are in the planting pits, and so you will actually enhance the, the fine root development, reduce the trunk spread, the trunk growth, and also reduce the terminal growth, which oftentimes the local merchants are really, really upset because they complain because a lot of the city-owned trees are obscuring their signs. And so, so you know, there, there's, some, there's some benefit there. Uh, to maintain shape, to maintain shape. Uh, this, this, these two hollies, what do they require to be pruned? Well, you've got to get a step ladder out and put that step ladder up into the beds, get up on the ladder, get your gas shears, your electric shears out to do the shearing. That's only uh, exposing you to a potential accident. And so a lot of the big landscape companies really frown upon uh, using ladders on a regular basis. So if you can use canvas that to reduce the pruning frequency, oftentimes you're going to reduce the frequency of your accidents on the job. This is where also uh, where it's going to work well, where maybe initially um, maybe the, uh, the landscape designer or the architect maybe uh, planted these uh, or suggested that these trees be planted too close to the building, and you know what happens in three, four, five years down the road. You know, you want these trees to grow, all of a sudden you want them to stop growing. But if you don't put the right tree in the right place, that tree will continue to grow and then you become a slave to maintenance. And this is where canvas that would work quite well. Here's another, another example. Uh, the architect had in mind to softening the, uh, the look of that building and maybe to bring that building down to earth, so to speak, to make it look a little bit more, uh, you know, more livable, to throw a little bit of shade on the building, but what happens is in an effort to soften the building, you're, you're dealing with a little bit more frequent maintenance, uh, crown reduction, pruning those limbs away from the windows so they're not smacking up against the glass, elevating some of the lower branches. This would be an ideal situation for canvas that work, would work quite well. And then you know what happens, uh, architects or landscape designers, they want to sell as many plants to you as possible. Uh, they will put in large, fast-growing plants, uh, and they put them in an area where only one would be enough, but they may put two, three, or more. And then eventually, after time, all these plants start to compete with each other. And so some people would need to remove every other plant, but there's another option. There's an option of using canvas that in this situation. One thing I mentioned earlier is that the trunk growth, the diameter of the tree will also be reduced as well as the terminal growth. And as you can see in here, you can see some of the rings. You can see uh, this is untreated, and this is the year that was treated, and you can see the reduction in the annual ring. So eventually, this tree will grow out. The canvas that will, uh, will no longer be uh, efficacious and then this tree will go right back to normal. And this is the situation where this is going to, going to work. You've got these tree pits, you've got these grates, and I've seen many, many times the whole intention of putting these iron grates in is to come in as the tree grows in diameter with a cutting torch and slowly, every couple of years, take another ring out 
to accommodate the diameter. So this is what uh, the canvas set's going to do. It's going to uh, reduce the trunk growth rate and it'll sort of delay that uh, need to do the, uh, the resizing of the crates. Energy reallocation. Uh, and so the question is, you know, how could this slow growth provide any, any benefit to the tree? And so Dan Herms, who was an entomologist at Ohio State, uh, came up with this uh, tree energy budget theory and that the trees, they have a certain amount of energy. And this is the five general categories where the energy is devoted. And most tree species uh, put a lot of their energy in growth, in terminal growth. Terminal growth means foliar growth. The more foliage, the more starches, and the more sugars are produced for the tree. And so, so that's fairly typical. Trees want to grow in vegetatively. And they also will put some of the energy into some of the other defense mechanisms, root growth, reproductive structures, flowering, etc. But what happens once canvas that is applied, it does something different. What it does, it redirects that energy that normally would go into terminal growth. It suppresses the vegetative growth, but then it goes into the other areas uh, where you get more root growth. And I'm not just talking about the support roots. I'm talking about fibrous roots because that's important with trees. You really want to have a good fibrous root system that's going to help a tree withstand drought situations. Um, it's going to help manage uh, low, mo low soil moisture uh, levels as well. So here, this is what happens when um, you use CanvasStat. And here's an example. This is the control. And this is the treated on the right. And you can see both of these trees are in these plant coffins or tree coffins, whatever you want to call them. And so they can dry out very readily. Using CanvasStat, you're going to get more fibrous root growth. And that works out really well. Here's ponderosa pine. Pines in general do not have very good root systems. But so this might be a good idea to treat a pine, maybe not so much for the vegetative growth reduction, but maybe for the, the fine root production. So that's something to really consider. There's the control, there's the treated. You can see there's a pretty marked difference uh, in the different in the two different uh, pictures. Newly transplanted sugar maples. Here's an example of canvas that treated on the left and the control on the right. Now, this is that same tree. Um, about um, after three years, you can see the difference. You can see the treated tree on the left is much darker in green. You notice some more of a compactness. And what's nice for the young tree like this, I know a lot of the tree growers, they don't want to reduce growth. They want that tree to get up and growing. They want it to caliper up. They want it to get a head size because they want to get it in and out of the nursery. But I was uh, in a nursery last fall in the mid-Atlantic where this nursery grower had some several large zilcovas. They were getting to the point they were four, five, six inch in diameter. And as they got that big, he started losing his market for that plant. And so what we did is we slowed down these zilcovas and with an effort to hopefully hold them so they, you, they wouldn't require such a large ball. And because many people can't handle a, a tree ball at three, four, five, six feet in diameter. So that was the whole plan there. So I'll let you know how that works out. Here's a close up of the foliage. You can see how nice and dark green that foliage looks compared to the untreated. And these are some of the other benefits as well. Uh, one of the uh, one of the offsprings, one of the uh, products that is produced is abscisic acid. And also at the same time, you'll increase the production of chlorophyll. But abscisic acid, what that does is the higher the concentration of abscisic acid will actually actually make those stomates close. And so you'll have more, uh, the more you'll conserve the moisture in the leaves with the stomates closed. Also, you'll see a thicker cuticle as well. And, um, and that's, be that's beneficial for uh, the tree being able to handle a drought stress period, and which we seem to be having right now out in the East Coast, where I'm calling you from. Uh, here's an example of the untreated uh, cherry bark uh, oak on the left, and you can see how much thicker the, um, uh, the leaf on the treated on the right is. 
One thing that cannabis that also does, it increases the number of leaf hairs, uh, they call them trichome hairs, and the more hairs on the leaf will slow down the moisture loss. And the other thing that it does, and we found this out, and there's been some trials done, that the leaf is physically different than the untreated uh, leaf. Uh, we're finding out the leaf is a little bit more resistant. It slows the growth down. If you're in the apple growing business, there's a product. It's a growth regulator called Apogee, and Apogee is labeled for fruit trees. And what that does, it's a, it it's reduces the terminal growth. And they're finding out that canvas, I mean, Apogee treated apple trees are having a less incidence of fire blight, which is really pretty bad this year, especially at New Jersey. And you can see here's the untreated on the left, the treated on the right. Here's an example of what it does to uh, reduce the, uh, the scorch levels. I'm not saying it's going to eliminate scorch, but it's giving that tree uh, a better chance of surviving it, you know, versus not spraying it at all. Increased chlorophyll, red oak, typical color of your red oak. Here's the tree on the left. You can see how nice and dark and shiny that is. There's a big difference. I think it's really, I think it looks really great. This is a, um, a trial that Bartlett Tree Experts did uh, down in the Charlotte, North Carolina. And this, uh, this tree is bacterial leaf scorch. And we all know that at this point in time, there is no known remedy to actually control or to eliminate bacterial leaf scorch. What we're trying to do is mask the symptoms. And this is a, um, a canvas that tree to tree on the right. And you can see the difference. Uh, it, it just masks all the symptoms quite well. Urban tree stress. This is pretty much what we deal with if you're dealing in the urban jungle. Uh, you get that small tree, you're planting it, it's taking off, it's doing really well. Um, the roots are reaching out well beyond the drip line as we all know where they go. And then what happens after several years, and many times this doesn't take too long. I mean it seems that these trees grow exponentially, but of course they they really don't, but you can see how quickly a tree can outgrow its location. And this is what we've got. We've got the roots um, being uh, suppressed, and you've got the canopy being suppressed as well. So, so what do we do? We've got, uh, we've got some options right here. We want to reduce the growth rate, of course, or we could take the tree down. Um, this is, here's a good example of why uh, street trees live an average of seven to ten years. You think of all the pressures and all the stresses that this tree is undergoing. It's undergoing the drought stress, the limited soil rooting area, the, the soil moisture loss, unless people are out there irrigating this tree on a regular basis. Most likely, if this tree was not planted by a reputable company, they haven't put enough amendments into that backfill. They haven't used composted cow manure or, or any sort of wetting agents. Oftentimes, you know, it's builder soil is what I call it, just rocks and beer cans and, and subsoil. Uh, but these trees don't look too bad. But they've also, they've got the heat, reflection. They've got to be really, really tough because when they go under stress, what happens is the plight of the street tree they go under stress, and then the secondary invaders, as I call them, the borers, uh, the cankers will come in as well, and that's when the tree becomes uh, a target, and they send out pheromones that are picked up by these secondary invaders, and then once the borers get in there, then the tree is pretty much gone. Oftentimes, it's too late to, um, to do anything. So you've got all these issues. There's really no room to grow. Uh, the soil is fairly well compacted. It's the high temperatures that really that really do that, and then uh, you know you're just dealing with a lot of stress. Here's an example: Fort Worth, Texas. Here's two trees. This at 92. It's 92 degrees at 9:45 in the morning. You know, what are some of the things that you can do as an arborist to help these trees? Of course, you can provide supplemental irrigation. That's important as well. I mean, that's almost mandatory. But also, you can treat them with canvas that to help those fibrous roots develop. At the same time, you're suppressing the diameter of the, of the tree and then reducing the pruning needs. So it's a, almost an ideal plant right there. 
And so what we're trying to do is expand, to extend the lifespan of these trees by doing the treatments. What happens is the merchants, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one merchant that I met in, in Baltimore, they were unhappy because birds were up there and they were had all the bird droppings all over the sidewalk in front of their store. I don't think they're going to do anything about that. Camasan's going to be able to get rid of the birds, but at least it'll slow down the growth rate, keep the branches away from the windows, and, um, and just provide more exposure to some of those businesses. So what we're trying to do is develop all these things, develop the root systems, slow down the growth, and then also at the same time make that plant live a lot, little bit longer because of the short life cycle. Here's an example of a tree which has been dubbed the Lazarus tree. Uh, this tree is growing at the Morton Arboretum today. And as you can see, I've got some more freak, more updated photos. This tree was struggling. It was on death's door, as you might, might say. And so Rainbow said, let us do some trials on this tree, and let's see if we can bring it back. Now, also there's some other uh, activities done as well. Uh, there's some root uh, revitalization work done. Um, and so composted cow manure is incorporated into the root zone of this tree, along with fertilization. And you can see the progression from 89 to 2001. Uh, there's a marked difference. Of course, dead wood was pruned out of these trees. And these are what these trees look like today. You can see they're, they're, they're full, they're thicker. And I may not want to re regulate that tree at this point in time because I want that tree to fill in and fill in the gaps and to, uh, to have more foliage. So more foliage, more photosynthesis, more sugars and starches. One thing that you have to be very careful of is that trees that are in a state of rapid decline, they really are not good candidates for canvastat. And so um, the couple of things that you've got to do with a declining tree, you've got to alleviate the problem that's, uh, that's causing the stress. So whether it be soil compaction, that will also lead to low oxygen levels. And once the oxygen levels drop below 10 or 5% in the soil, that's when tree roots fail to grow. So if you can decompact the soil, add some composted cow manure, and lighten up that soil, that's where your roots will grow. They will not grow in heavy, compacted soil. Uh, herbicide damage could also cause tree decline. Under, as well as overwatering, you can kill a tree with kindness. I've seen it happen many, many times. Because many times the symptoms of drought stress are almost identical to uh, overwatering, to root rot. So also uh, insect and disease uh, problems should be addressed. As far as how to make the application, it's very simple. You can either use a truck mounted sprayer and you can uh, use this particular uh, device called the HTI soil injector. And so what's nice about this, this is very accurate down to the milliliter. Once you've determined the species and the rate that you want to use and how many, how you want to apply it, you can use this device to deliver accurate results so you don't under or over regulate the tree. It's extremely accurate. Just a little note, you don't want to put any uh, soluble fertilizers through this because some of the salts in the fertilizers can damage the uh, internal workings of this uh, unit. Uh, we do have a motorized backpack sprayer, not the one that you see in this photo, but we do have a motorized backpack sprayer that really helps um, with the application of canvas that. It makes the job go much more quickly. You don't need the motorized backpack sprayer. You can actually use a truck mounted sprayer as long as you don't mind dragging that hose all around the property. The other option is to use the basal drench kit. Uh, from what I understand, that little cool shovel in there that's designed to do the root collar is no longer available anymore. But basically, it comes with these Tupperware bottles, the measuring cups, and then this particular vessel on the right with the D handle, that's the unit that actually has the spout that, that comes out of the bottle and reattaches so you're able to do a very accurate and very precise uh, treatment. Here's the, uh, the difference between the two operationally. Uh, if you're out there to, to make things go fast and smooth and be profitable, 
uh, soil injection works the best. There are some other uh, drawbacks to doing the drench application. Oftentimes, you've got to do a root collar. So you've got to get down your hands and knees, pull the turf back, pull the mulch back, so you contain the material. So here's how it's done. This is where the root collar was done. Here's where you're actually doing the canvas that treatment. You're pouring it right at the base of the tree, and you're pouring it slowly. You don't want to pour it rapidly because you don't want this running off site and going into another garden or going down on the turf because off target plants will be regulated with Campstat. There's we've seen that and we'll see we'll show you what happens when that uh, occurs. Here's the soil injector kit. Very simple to use. It's connected to a spray rigger, a spray rig or backpack unit. And this is the fill button. When you push this button, the material enters the chamber, which is up to 250 mils. And then you push the other button on the right after you've released the fill button. And then that goes right into the ground. It takes maybe three or four seconds or so to, uh, to deliver the 250 milliliter dose. Some of the precautions I want to let you know. One thing you've got to do is make sure you identify the species. And so uh, within that genus, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there are certain species that might be very sensitive. Um, here is a elm tree. Uh, this was treated on the right at the F rate, which is the highest rate, instead of the B rate, which is almost the lowest rate. And you can see what the results were. Short, stunted, compact foliage, and the leaf size may be shrunk 75 to 80 percent. So what often happens is that this tree, if you overregulate a tree, it's not the end of the world. If you overregulate it today and, and realize tomorrow, oh, I made a mistake, you can go back to that property and you can remediate that. You can go in there, do, go in there with an air spade or a trail and remove that soil that you injected the canvas set into. And so there are certain ways that you can help trees that have been uh, mis, uh, you know, misapplied. For example, if you went with a a high rate on a Japanese maple, that may regulate that maple for three, four, five years. So there's ways of going about there trying to uh, re remediate that. Here's an example of a dogwood uh, that was treated with Cambocet, and this is year two. And you can see what happens. The leaves are very, very tiny, probably maybe a tenth or twenty or tenth or so of normal. The leaves are dark green. <laughs> Pardon me. And but they're a little on the cup side as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, you can see that the twigs are a lot more exposed. On the other hand, here's canvas that treated Kusa dogwood, um, very compact, but a very heavy flowering um, uh, benefit. So that's oftentimes is one of the side benefits. You will get more blossoms. Sometimes it may not be more flowers. But oftentimes the, the foliage, the vegetative foliage, will often obscure some of the foliage, some of the flowers. One thing that you have to do, and it's on the application guide, you do have to reduce the dose. Uh, you have to make sure that this diameter of the tree and the crown of the tree are not in proportion. So uh, you have to reduce the rate um, based upon the the loss of crown. So if a storm took out a third of your tree and ripped out a third of the crown, you've got to reduce your canvas that rate by a third. Also, if this tree, where you can see it's growing inside a sidewalk planter or a sidewood box, it's containerized, you've got to reduce the rate by 25%. So this tree, for example, would get a crown reduction and also would get a, a a root reduction, a restricted root reduction. So we may not use very much canvas that on that tree at all. Another concern that you have is is that if you don't contain a ride, if you don't contain the application and it runs off site, you're going to get regulation. So you can see the turf grass is regulated as it's coming down the slope. You can see right in here the dark green. Um, it's not going to kill the turf grass. The homeowner may come out and say, boy, that turf grass looks good. Why doesn't the rest of my lawn look like that? But the point is you've got to make sure you watch where you're, um, where you're putting it 
and make sure you keep it close to the base of the tree. Oftentimes, it will, um, if you're applying this to a fabric barrier, a plastic barrier, that's where it will run off and not get absorbed. So you really want it to come in contact with the soil, and that's my point. Pull back the turf, pull back the mulch, apply it to the soil at the base of the tree. Here's an example of what it does to tulip trees, I mean to tulips. So just so you understand, this is not the magic bullet. It's not going to cure all your problems. And don't wait till the 11th hour when the tree is on death's door. Uh, you want to make sure you address some of the other problems that have contributed to that decline before you do the, uh, the growth regulator treatment. And it's always good to get into uh, an IPM, uh, Integrated uh, Plant Health Care uh, Program. Marketing support, I touched upon this briefly. We have several publications. One of them is called the Canvastat Opportunity Guide. And what that is designed for is for you, the arborist, it's going to give you some guidance. It's going to tell you and it's going to calculate to figure out what your costs are based on the species and the diameter of the tree, how much canvas set you're actually going to use. And if you know how many milliliters, you know how much canvas set costs it in terms of milliliters, then you can figure out what your cost is going to be, and then you can figure out how much to charge. So we can give you some help with that canvas set opportunity guide. That's the name of that guide. The application guide is basically the label that's boiled down, some nice sketches, some nice pictures in there, and it makes it very simple and easy to read and to understand. The, the application guide, I recommend that um, because that is sort of the label in, uh, in the label, the canvas that label for dummies, so to speak. Cell sheets. These are sheets designed to put your company contact information, your logo, uh, and to be distributed to your clients. And these are some of the uh, cell sheets that are available out there. Uh, we've got several ones talking about urban tree stress, injured roots, control growth, and here's an example of Davey uh, on the campus, that one. Now, just to give you a little bit of coming attractions, um, last couple of years, I've been working with the little sister or the little brother of Camistat. It's called TrimTech. TrimTech is the same active ingredient, paclobutrazole, but this is a formulation that's designed to be sprayed on shrubs primarily. And this does the same thing as Camistat, but what it does, it works very quickly. It starts working immediately as soon as you apply it, and you'll see the difference in a matter of weeks. And it's a plate a pride as a, a foliar spray. You can either use a truck mounted spray, a backpack, a backpack sprayer, or you can even use a one or two gallon hand sprayer. It's very simple. It reduces the terminal growth the same way canvas that does. It enhances the color and it just reduces the need to go in and prune on a regular basis. Now with that said, I'm just hoping that everyone is still awake. And with that, um, again, if you have any questions, put them in the dialog box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, and feel free to call me or to email me, and uh, I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Uh, if you happen to be located within my travels, I do get around, I travel, plus we have other arborologists like myself, uh, Patrick Anderson, uh, we do get out, and if we can't get out, um, the territory managers would be able to get out with you as well. So anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you for attending, and have a good day.